part of the file, it went into Time has expired. Mr. McDermott is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> These days, Congress can't seem to agree on whether the sun is shining, but this issue has brought us together in a way unlike anything you've seen here. We all agree these applications were poorly handled and that the IRS stiff-armed us, basically, at best, when we asked about it. Our public servants ought to be held to a higher standard, and none more so than the agency that oversees and enforces the tax collection. The IRS is an easy target, and everybody wants to get a pitchfork when the tax man comes. But with our 24-hour media cycle passing around lighter fluid, it's getting harder and harder to get to the facts and fix what really is going on here. There's a difference in my mind between stupid mistakes and malicious mistakes. The overwhelming majority of applications for tax-free status for political activities were from far-right groups. And examiners took a shortcut, which they clearly regret, deeply regret. The report says in black and white on page 7, quote, the determination unit employees stated that they considered the Tea Party criterion as a shorthand term for all potential political cases. Close quote. These applications were singled out for their names and policy positions, not for the activities, which is really what they should have been singled out for. Some of these political groups were delayed in getting their taxpayer status, and that was wrong. Much as I dislike the right, I think it's wrong to be uneven handed in government application. The Inspector General report says that no one acted out of malice or political motivation. Mr. George, I want to know, do you still stand by that? We have no evidence at this time to contradict that assertion, sir. If we really want to root out the causes of this, we need to talk about campaign finance laws and Citizens United decision in 2010, which is when this all started. It all started right after Citizens United. People saw the door open. We can get in. We can do political advertising. And we won't have to report anybody's name. Applications for secret money political organizations increased by fourfold after that Supreme Court. This small group of people in the Cincinnati office screwed up. Nobody's going to deny that. They have simply screwed up. But the Congress. This committee messed up by not giving any cl clear criteria for what a real charitable organization is. The law is not clear, and people have to make judgments, and that means they've got to collect a lot of data to try and figure out what people are actually up to. Mr. Miller, clearly there's a problem with our current way of determining what an organization's primary purpose is, and, and I want to ask you in a minute about that. I want you to think about it while I'm talking. But as I watch this conversation shift from, from find out what's right and wrong and fix it to the IRS is broken and let's repeal it, imagine a country without – we could have repealed that along with the Obamacare yesterday. Uh, I'm reminded that it's only part right, part wrong. It's also about Republican storyline in this, in this agenda. We need to find some truth here. And I've heard members of this committee now talk about it. The IRS can't access your medical files. Is that true, Mr. Miller? Correct, sir. They cannot find out your private medical information. That's correct, sir. Their job in Obamacare is simply to collect paid financial information on which a determination is made as to whether somebody can get a subsidy for their premium. Is that correct? Were you covered and over what period is what we would be getting? It is not a fascist takeover uh, that's going on here of the health care system. Uh, and let's not forget that the IRS has one of the hardest and most hated jobs, and there are thousands and thousands of good, solid, hardworking Americans who work every day to run the, the system. And a couple of people make a problem. That does not damage the organization, in my view. You get rid of the people who made the problem. But I would really like to hear from Mr. Miller, what do you need that would make it so that this wouldn't have happened before? 
So there, there are two things, sir, um, and, I, and I appreciate the kind words for our people because we are an incredibly hardworking uh, and honest group, frankly, uh, and that seems to be forgotten in all this. Um, with respect to political activity, it would be a, a wonderful thing to get better rules, um, to get more clear rules, um, and in terms of our ability to get to this work, it would be um, – it would be good to have a little budget that would allow us to get more than the number of people we have to do 70,000 applications and to do our job in looking at whether an organization is tax exempt or not. All right. Time has expired. Mr. Nunes is recognized.